Yo, do you crave power? Do you need to feel in control? Of course you do. Have you ever wanted to play a children's party game so much you're willing to develop debilitating hand injuries just to play one more game again and again and again? Yeah, me too. Box controllers, they're great. They offload your suffering onto your opponent, causing them to uninstall Slippy and presumably fuck off somewhere else where they might actually do something meaningful instead. Therefore, switching to box-style controllers isn't just a choice, it's a moral obligation. And I, your humble god, is willing to guide you on your journey towards a greater future. Now, which one should you choose? No one cares. For all intents and purposes, they're basically the same thing. That's a lie, but do me a favor and pretend it's true. Except for the Smashbox. That, that, that thing. It should never see the light of day. It's been speculated to be the 11th plague of Egypt, the one God planned to send after killing every firstborn son. It's time to stop! So, you've acquired your tool of choice, but where do you start? Evidently by DMing me, or alternatively, browsing the two warring box discords. In that order, Apparently, judging by the quantity of Discord messages I receive, asking me to do the work for them. No, what you should do is read for this handy dandy guide, strategically avoiding the point and click adventure, finding any meaningful information that I had to go through to figure this shit out. Picture this. You're in Uncle Punch, struggling to walk but hitting 25 Galint ledge dashes when suddenly, a question. In a game as complex as Melee, what techs do I even learn? How much time should I spend each day? And will people laugh at me if I keep going O2 again after the switch? The answer? I don't know. And instead of giving you an objective answer, I'll instead walk you through my journey, and then you can make with that information what you will. Preferably, far, far away from my DMs. Just stop. So, what did I do? I started on a DIY controller. Twice as tall as it should be, and with awful buttons. Ergo, from the bottom. So, you're already presumably in a better position than I was. But despite the less than ideal circumstances, I stayed dedicated to the Switch and didn't touch my GameCube controller until I was better than before the Switch. Quick side note, because I almost forgot to include this, but it's generally recommended to hover your hands above the controller, especially for the right hand that has to move between the top and the bottom row. So do yourself a favor and practice that from the start, instead of having to relearn it halfway through, like I have to. Now, how did I practice? One input at a time. I have never enjoyed structured practice, despite the obvious benefits, but this might be the one time where that's actually a benefit. I don't think it's very useful to establish a static routine before you're competent and comfortable with the controller. Instead, what I did was pick one tech at a time, and then I rotated between learning the input in training mode for however long it took until I hit it reasonably often and then I grinded it out on netplay until I could do it in games. And don't misunderstand, that is all I did. Once I was comfortable with one input, I moved on to the next. Practice until I know how to do it, grind it online, find the next input, rinse and repeat. What techs should you learn in what order? I frankly don't remember the exact order I learned them in nor do I think it was the objectively best order. Not to mention that it's obviously character dependent. Now, while I don't remember the order exactly, I know I started with Dashback out of Crouch, because I obviously have an unhealthy obsession with tech chasing. But after that, it was a mix of learning to shuffle Nair, full jump back air, do any form of up tilt, up B towards the stage rather than away from it, etc, etc. 
The order doesn't matter. Do what makes sense to you and don't worry about it. Now, the most common question I get about switching to the box is how long it takes to become good again. And the time frame I always give is that it took me one month to be 70% of the way there, three months to be 100% of the way there, and six months to be a fully realized Sigma gamer. And you might ask, what's the difference between 100% and Sigma gamer status? Well, when I was getting as good results on a box as I did previously on a GameCube controller, I still didn't feel like I was fully capable of doing every technique I knew before. And there were still moments of awkwardness left in my play. However, I was cleaner at what I did know how to do, so I still performed about as well. Sigma status then is when you've truly mastered every aspect of the controller. And while I might have already reached that level, which isn't true by the way, you never actually run out of things to practice in Melee, I understand that most people have not. So I asked Twitter what they wanted me to cover in a video like this, so that I wouldn't miss anything important. So if I do miss something important, you can now blame them instead of me. By far, the most common question I received was what my practice regimen looked like. So, I will reiterate what I said earlier. I focused on one skill at a time and grinded it until I could do it consistently. And then I moved on to the next tech, only backtracking whenever I felt like I was forgetting older tech. Basically, the least static practice regimen ever. A ton of questions were about miscellaneous tech, like learning how to DI and slide off DI moves, how to short hop with free frame drum squad characters, do pivots and angles for recovering, and covering all of them in detail would take forever. But most of that information is accessible in the box controller FAQ linked below. And for the rest, I think it helps to frame it all as different forms of tech skill. Like wave dashing, if you don't know how to do it, it'll feel overwhelming. But if you load up, say, slide off practice in Uncle Punch and practice it for a bit, you'll quickly get the feel for it and be able to do it in a real match, at least in my experience. With that said, for DI and recoveries, I would like to mention a lesser known fact, which is that the B button modifies your angles, allowing you to shorten recoveries like Sheik's up B. But it also works for DI, which in conjunction with the C-Stick modifiers lets you do some incredibly ambiguous DI on stuff like Sheik Downthrow. Now, don't worry too much about that, as it's stuff that I've only recently started practicing, so it's not exactly high on the priority list, but it is especially useful versus Sheik, so when you feel ready to do some more complicated inputs, I thought it might be helpful to know that it exists, and Sheik mains deserve to know that they actually have access to their most important recovery mix-ups on the box. And finally, I got asked which characters I think benefit the most from digital controllers and which benefit the least. I change my mind on this constantly, but I know for a fact that Peach is absurdly good on box. I also think Yoshi clearly benefits a lot, but after that I am less sure. Falcon almost gets strictly buffed with zero downsides, while Fox and Falco both get a fair few buffs and some nerfs, however, the buffs I feel like are way more valuable for Fox and Falco than they are for Falcon, so it balances out and I have a hard time telling which one I think is better than the other. Then we have Sheik, Marv and Puff, who I all think should be pretty decent, but I don't play them enough to say for sure. Luigi and Samus, I feel like should be pretty shafted by the box. Having such few wave dash angles matters a lot for those characters. And finally, Pikachu is the reason we have the sip sip clip. So clearly, he is the best character on the box. With all of that out of the way, I think what I have realized more than anything is that if you don't enjoy the process of switching and relearning everything from the ground up, it is 100% not worth it. I enjoyed it from day one and expected my results to tank for way longer than they did. And the reason I got back up to my old level so fast is because I enjoyed it so much. So temper your expectations and enjoy the process or you'll probably get nothing but misery out of it. There's a lot more I could talk about, but it's always going to be a very individual journey so I'd prefer to deep delve into specifics in other videos in the future instead. 
So I think I'm going to end it there. And I'd appreciate you subscribing or following me on Twitch. It helps fuel my degenerate addiction to numbers going up. And with that, I'll see you next time. Bye.